this leads us to our, our first uh, theorem, which is, is the best response condition. Now, there's a lot of notation in the notes uh, for this theorem, and it might look like a bit of a handful. And uh, the, the theorem simply says that C star R is a best response to uh, C R if and only if being an important um, thing, um, then sigma star r i, so the ith element of sigma r star is positive, implies that a sigma c t i is equal to the max of a sigma c t of all possible um, ones. Okay, now this this is the important part, and all that's essentially saying is that let's say we have some sigma r star, and that that will have a few zeros and a few uh, non uh, zero entries okay so all it's saying um and 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 let's also consider the fact that we've got this sigma c t okay so sigma c t if you remember in the in the previous uh video in the previous section is a column vector where every entry is just the uh, utility of playing the corresponding pure strategy all right so all our theorem is saying is that if the value of sigma r star is greater than zero, then the utility of that given strategy, okay, um, for, for whatever uh, it is, is equal to the maximum of all the values in, in here. So in other words, that every value that's played with a non-zero probability must actually, the, the strategy of that uh, that corresponds to that must actually have the same uh, value and it must be the biggest value. So we have u throughout here. And that u is simply equal to this maximum. So that's the theorem. And uh, we we prove it, it's, it's relatively straightforward to prove, it's just a little bit of, of algebra. And so we start out by saying that the utility to the row player is going to be equal to the weighted sum over all these elements of this, this column vector, okay? This column vector here. So, so we know that. And then if we just let u equal the maximum value in, the, in, in this, so the maximum over all k of a sigma c t uh, to the to the k, then we can just rewrite this as sigma r a sigma c to the t. And now we're just going to do a relatively straightforward trick, which is just to add zero. Um, so we are going to say that that's sigma r i times u minus u. Uh, plus a sigma c t to the i. Okay, so I've just added a, I've added zero here. All right. So once I've done that, I can expand things out a little bit and I can say, okay, well, that's just going to be equal to uh, sigma, sorry, the sum from i equals one to m of sigma r i u minus the sum from i equals 1 to n of sigma r i times u minus a sigma c to the t i. Okay, so I've just kind of, that minus sign has, has disappeared in there. This, however, the u we can take out 
And then all we're left with is the sum of all the probabilities. So that's just going to be 1. So that's just equal to u minus this, this same expression. So minus sum from i equals 1 to m sigma ri times u minus a sigma c t i. Okay? Now, by definition, we've said that u is the maximum of these values. So we know that this expression here is uh, greater or equal um, to uh, zero. And so the only way we can make our utility as large as possible, which is ultimately what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to make this as large as possible, um, is to make this sum as small as possible. So the way to make this sum as small as possible is to make it zero. And we can make it zero in two ways. Either this is zero, or if this is not zero, then we need this to be equal to that. In other words, if sigma ri is greater than zero, then u minus a sigma c t i must be equal to u, which is the, the point of uh, the theorem and completes the proof.